Chapter 11, we'll look at gases. We're going to look at the pressure of a gas and how it is affected by the other variables, volume, temperature, and number of moles. First of all, let's talk about what pressure is. Pressure is a result of molecules hitting the container. So if you visualize a container of gas molecules, so I have my container, and if I have just a few molecules in it, they won't hit the sides of the container as much. But the more molecules I have, the more they will hit the side, so that increases the pressure. Or if the molecules are moving faster, then they will hit the sides of the container more. So pressure is a result of molecules hitting the container. So let's visualize this first scenario. How is pressure affected by volume? So imagine we have a container of a gas. I have my gas molecules in here. And then what I did is I squished the container down until it was smaller. So now here's my container. And now all those molecules have to fit in a tighter area. So you can see that as volume decreases, pressure increases. So pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So this symbol right here is called the proportional symbol. It's not equal, but it's something similar to equal. It's related to, so pressure is related to the inverse of volume, inverse proportional. All right, let's look at how pressure and temperature are related. So if you imagine our container of gas molecules again, so I have my container, and what happens as I increase the temperature is it makes them move faster. So now they're moving faster than they were before. And so they'll hit the side of the container more often than they were before. So as temperature increases, pressure also increases. So pressure is proportional to temperature. As the one goes up, the other goes up. So it's a direct instead of inverse. As the one goes up, the other goes down. Now, one thing that's no, important to notice about temperature is that if we had a negative temperature, that wouldn't work well in this equation. So we're going to always have temperature in Kelvin, in absolute temperature. So remember, degrees Kel, uh, Kelvin, and they don't have the degree, equals degrees C plus 273.15. Okay, I'm going to erase that degree. Kelvin doesn't actually have the degree symbol. So we're never going to use Celsius. We'll always change it to Kelvin. And Kelvin is equal to Celsius plus 273. And if you look at the other slideshow, there's a nice graph that shows how the temperature, how we figure out this number, 273.15, and how it's related to where the volume goes to zero. So for our purposes, just be sure you're in degree C. Let's look at how pressure is affected by the number of moles that we'll abbreviate as N. So little n is the number of moles. So again, I visualize a container of gas. So here's my gas particles and molecules. Now, if I increase N, what happens is I just put more particles in there. So if I have more particles, and they're going to hit the sides more often. So as N increases, P also increases. So again, it's direct. So pressure is proportional to the number of moles. It's direct. So these are our three relationships. And what we're going to do is put them together into one equation. And that equation is called the ideal gas law. So we had that pr pr pressure is proportional to N and T and inversely proportional to V. So what we're going to do is change that to put a constant in. So we can say pressure is equal to N T over V if we put a constant. So we're going to call the constant R. And then to avoid fractions, we're going to say PV equals NRT. 
And that is our ideal gas law. This is an important equation, and it relates all the variables to each other. So what is R? R is a constant. That means it's always the same. And R is always equal to this number, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres over mole Kelvin. And that's a lot of units, but part of R's purpose is to get the units to relate because pressure and temperature or volume or moles, they don't have the same units. So this helps bring our units consistent. Another thing to remember, it's very important, is that the temperature must be in Kelvin. So you might be given Kelvin, you might be given degree C. If you're given degree C, change it to Kelvin. And the last thing to watch for is that the units of P, V, and T have to match R. We have to be in liters, atmospheres, mole, and Kelvin. So that's our equation. Let me go through an example of how we use that equation. And the example is in the green box. Calculate the volume occupied. So let's set it up with given and find. So the thing we're supposed to find is the volume. Well, what volume is going to have units of liters? So we want liters. And what we know is 0 0.845 moles. And we know 1.37 atmospheres and 315 Kelvin. So that's the setup of my problem. And the first thing I want to check is that my units match R. And they do. So moles is the unit, atmosphere is the unit, Kelvin, and then we'll liters. So all our units match R. So now all we have to do is plug it into our equation of PV equals NRT. So we can plug it in right now. I like to rearrange and solve for the unit we're looking for. We're looking for the volume. So I'm going to divide both sides by P. So we have volume equals NRT over P. And when I plug in those numbers, I'll get my volume. So I'll just plug them in. Volume equals N, which is our um, zero. So this one is N. 0.845 moles. R, this is R, always that number, 0. Point, let me erase all that and make this a little more clear. Uh, 0. 0.8, oh, sorry, another 0. 0. 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and then T, I'm going to squish that in, is, this one's T, didn't really give myself room, 315 Kelvin, and I'm going to divide it by P, this one is P, 1.37 atmospheres. Okay, and I included all the units. You may want to just drop them. That might be easier. The reason I included them is to show you how the units cancel with R, so that moles cancel. This Kelvin cancels. The atmosphere cancels. And we're left with units of liters, which is the unit for volume. So now I'm going to go to my calculator, 0 0.845 times 0 0.0821 times 315 divided by 1.37 equals, and I get that the volume equals um, 15.95, the unit is liters, and then to keep my significant figures, I'm going to call that, the, the 5 is going to round the 9 up, so that looks like it's going to be 16.0 liters with the correct significant figures. So that's how you do the ideal gas law. And 
I did it by solving for V first. You don't have to. You can plug your numbers into PV equals NRT if you want to. I kept the units. You don't have to. You can cancel the units once you're sure they match R. Okay. So here it is a little more clean. That My work was pretty messy, so this will probably be better to see. So here's another ideal gas law calculation, and this one will require converting units. Calculate the number of moles of gas in a basketball inflated to a total pressure of 24.2 psi with a volume 3.2 liters at 25 degrees. So let's think about our given and our sign. The question it asks is to find the number of moles. So that is N. That's what we're trying to find. We're given P pressure equals 24.2 PSI. We're given that the volume equals 3.2 liters. And we're given that the temperature equals 25 degrees C. So let's go back to pressure. Um, we talked about that pressure can be in atmospheres. So one way to measure it is one atmosphere. That's the pressure of atmospheric pressure at a standard day at sea level. Um, another way to look at it is with a barometer. So a barometer looks at how high a top column of mercury can be held in a vacuum. And so it turns out that that's equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, which is also called tor. So 760 tor. And one other way to look at it is in pounds per square inch. Pressure is a force over an area, so a pound per square inch. And one atmosphere pressure is actually equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch or PSI. And so that's the PSI unit. Well, and think about that for a minute. 14.7 pounds over every square inch of your body all the time. Atmospheric pressure is a lot of pressure. So these are the numbers that we're going to use to convert pressure. And if you look at in your book, it'll give a good description of barometers and a table of conversions. But I'll just put that there so you can see where they're coming from. So in this problem, we have PSI, but we don't want that. We want the units of R. So remember R, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. These are the units we need. So we don't need PSI, we need atmospheres. So I'm going to do a conversion here. I'm going to put one atmosphere on the top. 14.7 psi on the bottom. Okay, and that converts pressure from psi to atmosphere. So 24.2 divided by 14.7, and that gives me 1.65 atmospheres. And that's the pressure I need to use. My next unit volume in liters. Liters is good. I don't have to mess with that one. Then I have temperatures in degrees C. That's not good. I need Kelvin. So I'm going to add to that 273, and that equals 298 Kelvin. Now, I didn't use 273.15 because I don't have that kind of significant figures. I don't have anything past the decimal, so I'm not going to worry about past the decimal. So here are the numbers I'm going to use in my equation. Here's my PV equals NRT. OK, um, I'm going to use the correct units. I'm going to use the 1.65 atmospheres, the 3.2 liters, and the 298 Kelvin. So let me show you this other method that what I can do is just plug in the numbers and skip the units. I'll just plug them in right here. So P, that's 1.65. V, 3.2. Equals N, I'm going to leave it N. That's what I don't know. R, 
and t is 298. Doesn't look much like a 298. There we go. All right, and now I'm going to solve for n. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.0821 and by 298 on this side and on this side, 0.0821 and 298. These guys all cancel. And now I go to my calculator. 1.65 times 3.2 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 298 equals, and then in this case, I'm going to use two sig figs because my volume only has two. And so my answer is going to round 0 0.22, and the unit is moles. And that's my answer. So I showed you two different varieties, using the units, not using the units, um, first solving for the variable you want, or first plugging in the numbers. You're welcome to use whichever one works best for you. And here it is out, typed out, a little easier to read. There's some variations on the ideal gas law, and you won't be tested on these, but they're interesting and important to look at. If you replace N, the number of moles, with mass over molar mass, M over molar mass, this can give you some more information. One version, we can solve the, the ideal gas law for molar mass. And you can see you can find the molar mass of a gas if you know its mass, temperature, pressure, and volume. Another rearrangement gives us density, density, which is mass over volume. Um, and two things to notice about this. One, it's inversely proportional to temperature. So higher temperature means lower density. And that is important for hot air balloons. That's why they rise, because at the higher temperature, there's lower density. And so the mass in the balloon will rise. It also explains why certain gases float. So gases with a lower molar mass are less dense. That's why helium will float, because it has a very low molar mass compared to air or, say, carbon dioxide. 